So, hi. Uh, in a data center, why do we require scheduling and priority? Uh, in a data center, many customers arrive to get the service from the servers. So, the servers can be hopped if we don't have a particular ordering of the priorities of the customers. Uh, to provide service to the customers. So we need a particular policy to decide how to order the customers one after another. And in that sense, the idea of scheduling policies come into the picture. So what happens when there is a single server case and there are many customers in the data center, how the server serves each of the customer. So we consider a single server, which is this, and there are many customers coming to the server. We assume they are arriving at a, at a statistical distribution of poison distribution. So there are poison arrival of customers and the poison arrival rate is lambda. So the customers are arriving lambda rate to the server and how the server decides to serve these customers. Now the server must decide on two things. One is the priority of the customer and another is what scheduling policy to uh, apply to serve these customers. Now when we open a web page and the time it takes for the web page to be interactive is uh, the TTI, time to interact. This time depends on how the server uh, gives the service to the customer. Now there are many factors in which the service de uh, depends. First, the server completes a service and that is called service time. The time it takes to give complete service to the customer. And when other customers arrive at the same server and they have to wait for the other customers to completely receive the service and then the server is ready to serve the other customers, then that customer goes through a waiting time. So the total time that it takes in the system is a summation of both. So we can say that is the system time. Now this system time is given by the addition of this waiting time and the residual service time for serving the other customers. Now we consider uh, a system in statistical equilibrium where the number of customers coming in is equal to the number of customers going out. And first we will go through the Little's law that basically gives an idea of the average number of customers coming into the system. So by Little's law, we have the number of customers which are coming into the system, EQ is given by the multiplication of lambda times ES, where ES is the total system time when the customer is in the server, in the system, the total time it takes to complete and the lambda is the person arrival rate. So we have the number of customers EQ is equal to lambda times ES. Now let's say the number of customers is N. So the expected value of N, EN can be given by lambda times ES. That is our little slow in the poison arrivals. So this is a server and then there is a buffer in Q where the other customers have arrived and the customers are arriving at the rate lambda. So this is the number of customers how it is modeled. Now we have to understand what is the waiting time for this customer which arrives in the server and it has to wait in the waiting line. What is the possible average waiting time, the mean waiting time of this MG1Q. Now the waiting time can be formulated as W is equal to X0 bar. Now this X0 bar is the amount of time it has to wait before the server starts serving this customer added with the entire service time to all the other customers which are being served currently by the server. So there are j customers being served. So uh, j is equal to 1 to sorry n customers being served. For the jth class of customer the service time is xj. So this total time it requires to serve this because uh, all these customers is given by this summation and added with the waiting time for the customer which has arrived at the waiting line in the server. This gives the waiting time of the customer 
So this is the total waiting time before the customer starts getting a service. Now what is this total waiting time? How do we model the average? So we have to find the mean waiting time, expectation of W, and by the linearity of the expectation, we have expectation of x naught bar plus expectation of the summation of xj. Now, the linearity of the expectation says that it is equal to expectation of xj, where we, we assume that the service times for each of those customers in every class j is same, that is, expect, that is x. So that is expectation of x multiplied with n. But the number of customers in the server is not known to us. So n is a random variable. So by the law of total expectations, this is expectation of n multiplied with expectation of x here. And expectation of x naught is basically we say it is w naught. Now this expectation of n is given to us by the Lebel's law here, where let's say s, uh, the total system time, that is here, is in our case, uh, lambda times es, is equal to uh, w, uh, en is equal to lambda times e of w, that is the waiting, the system time is the, wait, is the total waiting it has to do. This E of W here is the total waiting it has to do. So, it's W naught plus lambda times E of W, that is the average waiting time for the uh, customers, multiplied by E of X. Now, we have, we have E of W here. Now, if we simplify this thing, if we simplify this thing, E of W, 1 minus, lambda times e of x is equal to w naught. Now this lambda times e of x is a factor. This is called the utilization coefficient of the server which is rho. Rho is equal to lambda times e of x. That is the utilization coefficient. And we substitute rho here and e of w times 1 minus rho is equal to w naught. So we get the mean waiting time e of w is equal to w naught divided by 1 minus rho. This is the result which we get from using Little's law. So that is the mean waiting time of the mg1 cube in a single server system where e of w is equal to w naught divided by 1 minus rho. Now here we know that rho is the utilization coefficient of the server and rho is equal to lambda times e of x where we suppose that for a customer with arrival mean arrival rate lambda and the service times up to the customer being expected value of x, this is the rho for that customer. That is the utilization coefficient of the server and that is used in this village. Now what is what is W naught? W naught is the waiting of the customer when he arrives to the server but the server is busy serving other customers. So how do we model W naught to understand its value? Let's dive deep in and keep this relation first. So we have the waiting time E of W given as W naught divided by 1 minus rho where we know rho is equal to lambda times E of x. What is W naught? Let's say W naught uh, is we have this thing E of x bar. Now this depends on a binary random variable and let's say it is equal to 0 when the binary random variable is 0. So uh, we say that e of x bar, okay, this is equal to e of x given the binary random variable b is equal to b is 
0 when v is equal to 0, which means the server is not busy. So there is essentially no waiting. Because the server is not busy, the customer arrives and the server starts serving the customer. But when the server is busy, v is equal to 1, and this is actually given by p of x square divided by 2 e of x where e of x is the first moment of the service time x and e of x square is the second moment of the service time x. Now with the probability of the utilization coefficient rho, of course here the probability was 1 minus rho. So what is W0 ultimately? So rho times e of x given b is equal to b plus 1 minus rho times e of x given b is equal to 0 and here b is equal to 1. Now this is 0 and this has a value. So ultimately we have w0 is equal to rho times e of x square by 2 e of x. Okay. But then we know what is rho. Rho is lambda times e of x. e of x squared by 2 e of x. So we have lambda e of x squared and half here and that is w naught. So we did this generically. So we have e of w is equal to this w naught by 1 minus rho we have w0 is equal to half lambda e of x square where x is a random variable denoting the service time and this is the second moment of that and we have rho is equal to lambda times e of x. Now let us use these generic terms to uh, divide it up in the each of the classes. So for jth class of the customer this w0 will be resolved into half of lambda j, where lambda j is the person arrival rate of the jth class of the customer, and e of xj square, where xj is the service time for the jth class. And then for the jth class, we will have this, and also the rho j for the jth class is equal to lambda j times e of xj. So what, of course we must know the first moment and the second moment. e of xj and e of xj square. Now for a server we are saying that the service time the xj basically is a negative exponential random variable with a rate mu. So xj is a negative exponential random variable the service time xj is a negative exponential random variable with rate mu which means the expectation of xj is 1 by mu 1 by mu j so expectation of x is 1 by mu, expectation of xj for the jth class is 1 by mu j, with the parameter mu j is a negative exponential. So that, that is the first moment. And what is the second moment? The second moment has expectation of xj square is equal to sigma j square plus 1 by mu j square, where sigma j square is the variance component. So we have these two factors plugged into here to get these w0 and rho j which is required in the equation for the mean waiting time of the mg1 system.